Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 2. This is going to be my review slash breakdown for this episode, aka Armageddon Part 2, the second part of the five-part crossover. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was crazy. So much went down. Especially towards the end of the episode, there was so many huge reveals. I mean, talk about that Joe scene. We'll get to that later in the video, as we do normally. We're going to go through this all bit by bit, chronologically. So, let's start off with the beginning. Okay, so Despero and The Flash have a talk in Star Labs, and he reveals that tomorrow is the beginning of the end. Tomorrow is the day where you're going to go mad, Flash. And so, obviously, Team Flash is a bit hesitant to believe Despero, and so is Barry, because they believe that Barry's just a normal same person, and he's not going to just snap tomorrow. However, things throughout this episode lead towards the idea that yes, Barry has snapped and it's something with inside of him and something greater than just someone mind controlling him. And so one of the story strands in this episode is the fact that Allegra and Team Flash doesn't believe Despero's love of Earth as a real thing because he's an alien. But it's revealed later in the episode that he was actually exiled and sent to Earth and he adopted it as his new home and he isn't just going to let someone like the Flash destroy his new home when his old one he's not able to go back to. And maybe, you know, the way to get rid of Despero is to let him get back to that old planet. There is definitely a possibility with Supergirl being referenced in this episode, maybe they do an off-screen thing where they're like, okay, Supergirl, Martian Manhunter are going to take Despero back to his home planet and unexile him, I guess, if that's a thing. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. So strength and invulnerability is his powers. Apparently he can rival Kryptonians. So it's a real big shame that Superman and Supergirl don't just tag team him because two Kryptonians facing off against Despero, I'm pretty sure they could defeat him. So at this point we get the return of a very familiar face and a very welcome face. Alex Danvers returns. Kyla Lee is back in the Arrowverse and man oh man was I excited when she showed up because this is the first Supergirl crossover post Supergirl ending. Yes, I know Supergirl only ended two weeks ago. However, it's just so exciting to see these characters continue on and reference stuff that happened on Supergirl. And so it seems like the new DEO which was formed at the end of Supergirl is in fact helping out Team Flash by giving them information about Despero. She actually comes back later in the episode with more information, so it seems like this new DEO has literally all the same data that they have from the past, and that's why they're going to be useful, and that's why they're going to want Alex's help in the crossover. Also, she is a very skilled fighter, but at the end of the day, she does have a lot of information that could be very worthy of Team Flash's attention, and it turns out to be true in this episode. Okay, let's move on from here, which was a great moment. I absolutely loved it. I just was freaking out as soon as Alex showed up. But Frost needs a weapon. Now, she goes up to Chester and she's like, can you build me this weapon to take down Despero in order to help out Barry? Because we need to level up our offense. And obviously, Chester, this is a big thing for him because he is a pacifist and he has never created a weapon to harm someone. This is continued later in the episode where we get the scene between Allegra and Chester. Again, Allegra is calling him Chuck, which still annoys me because it just kind of undermines their potential friendship that has been referenced many times this season and last season, but still she calls him Chuck like she doesn't know his real name. Anyway, that's just like a little nitpick that I have about Allegra's character think it's kind of weird still but the overall link and you know Chester's realization later in the episode I think really works okay so Barry goes to a crime scene and it's revealed that he is under investigation for committing a federal crime and now this is obviously completely untrue and apparently had something to do with Carver in the past and it's at the exact same point that a security guard has lost his mind and it just happens completely out of nowhere and this is as Barry's expecting his mind to break. So everything is kind of weirdly going wrong at the same point. And at this point, he actually sees Despero out at the scene. And he's just in the crowd. 
So you kind of get the idea that maybe Despero is manipulating events in order for things to turn out the way that he wants them to turn out. Things are still up in the air as to what his exact intentions are. I mean, we know that he wants to stop the Flash if he goes insane, but he's giving him some leeway to kind of prove himself, but Barry isn't doing very good at that. Okay, so Cecile isn't feeling very well. She says it's been hard lately, you know, but we literally don't know at this point and we are thinking, what is going on? Like, could something greater be happening? And people have been theorizing, why hasn't Joe shown up? Why has Cecile barely shown up? Well, we get answers to that later in the episode and it's the most shocking moment of the entire episode. And we'll get to that later because I don't feel like we need to skip to that because, yeah. It deserves its whole own segment and so Cecile can feel another presence during this scene and it seems like yeah there's definitely someone controlling people in Central City and so it's at this point that Barry talks to the guard who has lost his mind and this is with the help of Cecile who tells him the location and he's continually mumbling and occasionally screaming out the name Zotar. This is a name that is completely new to the Flash and to us as viewers. We didn't even know if it was a real thing. I kind of just thought the guard was mumbling until it was referenced later that he was saying Zotar. And so, yeah, this is a new villain. And Zotar is a meta from National City, another link to Supergirl. So Barry fails to stop her just after this. And this occurs after Star Labs is being shut down for a radiation leak. Now, everything is going wrong all at the same time. It can't be a coincidence. So someone has destroyed Star Labs radiation warning and basically it's been defunctional for a long time and that's why these guys have come in. If it went on any longer, there could have been a radiation fallout. It could have been terrible. And in order to prevent Team Flash from being found out as Star Labs being their base, Barry goes to the time vault and he talks to Gideon and Gideon is able to hide some of the places that would have exposed Star Labs as Team Flash's base. He's able to do this through the use of holograms and they're pretty convincing at that rate. But with all the checks going on, Gideon reveals that she's going to have to wipe the entirety of Star Labs and all their data, which will completely get rid of her. And so Barry says his final goodbyes to Gideon and she's gone forever, including all of the data at Star Labs. So yeah, pretty drastic. This is very permanent stuff and everything in this episode seems very permanent. However, I think it will come with a big twist by the end of Armageddon and possibly Star Labs will be back, but I'll explain that theory towards the end of the video. Okay, let's move on from here. We have Barry who wakes up after facing off against Zotar in the middle of the city and Zotar is able to control Barry's mind and Barry wakes up completely blank, having attacked Team Flash inside of his apartment where they're all hiding out, and you get the moment where Allegra's like, oh, you almost hit Chuck. I've already had my rant about that. But it's a big moment because this is the first moment that gives us a clue of what is going on because we're in the same mindset as Barry. We're seeing everything from his perspective because we're not seeing what he's doing during these blackouts and how everything is going down. We're being shown exactly what Barry knows and thinks he's doing. So everyone else is privileged to a lot more and this goes for what happens later in the episode in regards to Joe as well because Barry is unaware, we're completely unaware and so Barry finds Despero after this scene who explains that he has adopted Earth as his home and that he's exiled, we talked about that previously and so another big moment happens when Barry faces off against Zotar for the second time and she turns everyone, all the cops and all the civilians on the street into zombies essentially and Barry is suspended midair by her powers she has telekinesis and he's being suspended and crunched like a spoon looks extremely painful and Barry is kind of phased but he is so powerful as we've been told many times he has leveled up and he shows his power as he phases so fast without even moving that he is creating lightning and he basically goes Super Saiyan and uses lightning against Zotar and he's able to put the Metacuffs on her. Now this was a great scene, I thought the CGI was really good, 
Barry's eyes were filled with lightning and lightning was going absolutely everywhere surrounding him. He looked kind of scary to be honest, which makes sense considering that it's revealed that Barry attacks the citizens after the scene because he completely blacked out. And so has he turned evil is the big question. And so this is at the point where Despero returns and he says this ends now and he tries to attack and kill Barry but Chester saves Barry and so Barry finds out about his attack on the citizens through the TV through a news report and you can see him literally shooting lightning at other people which is just completely shocking because we haven't been shown that and it's something that happened on the spot and especially because it's after he put the metacuffs on Zotar and now this is the reason why we're questioning what the hell is going on. Is this Despero's manipulations or is Barry actually losing his mind? And now talking of losing his mind, Joe is dead. Barry doesn't know at all. He has no memory of it. And apparently this happened six months ago. So this comes as a huge revelation to Barry, but also as a huge revelation to us as the audience because his death happened off screen. And now I think there is a reason for this because, okay, spoiler alert, we know that Jesse L. Martin signed a new contract for season eight, so Joe will return. So don't worry about that. But I think this is going to lead into something that I'm going to theorize about later in the video. That could be the reason why Joe is dead and how he could potentially return later in the season. And so it's just crazy that Barry doesn't remember that Joe, his stepdad, died and he doesn't remember at all and so he gathers everyone he even grabs iris he speeds her into cecile's apartment and cecile is losing her mind being like barry can't do this to me i'm trying to get past this but you're bringing this all back up and you're acting crazy at the same point they see him on the tv attacking people and so they're like what the hell is actually going on with barry there is definitely something greater going on so after barry escapes we have the return of alex danvers again she is only on a video call but it's still cool to see her back and so she explains from the information that she has at the deo that despero is from a planet and a race called the kalanorians and so i guess the planet is called kalanor and so they have on this planet a power source which is extremely powerful called the flame of Pytar and it seems like he's utilizing that and this is the reason for his powers and the way that he is it's because he is from the specific race of aliens and so at this point Alex actually references Supergo and Jean which is crazy I love the fact that they reference them although the excuse is like eh, sure she says Kara and Jean are off world and that's why they can't help. And so this could obviously be on Mars, it could be on a completely new planet, it could be on Argo. Seems like it's a mission and they are desperately needed in the outer space. And so that's why the two alien heroes from Team Supergirl are up there. So nevertheless, it's great to have a reference to Supergirl and not just see Alex, but reference Kara and Jean. Okay, so this leads on to the final scene of the entire episode. We have Barry who goes to the Hall of Justice. We haven't been there since Crisis on Infinite Earths. You see all the chairs, obviously not all the members are there. Superman is not even here despite that he's on Earth and we've had no explanation for why he's not helping out. But out of nowhere we get Black Lightning who returns and it's just so great to see a familiar face from another show. And so this is obviously one of our big crossover characters. He's going to be appearing in a big chunk next episode. And so Barry is going to get help from Black Lightning and this is backed by some great orchestral music back in the scene and Jefferson goes, Barry, what the hell is going on? And Barry just replies with one brilliant line, he says, injustice. And that's it, the episode ends. I got chills, I thought it was a great moment and I have a theory about what exactly is going on and why these very permanent things are happening. So we have Star Labs, which is shutting down. They're gonna demolish it. We have the citizens of Central City who do not trust Barry because Barry just attacked them and Joe is dead. Those three things are hugely impactful and are a really big deal. So could this all just be an alternate timeline where the worst things happen and when Armageddon is officially over, will everything be turned back to normal? I think it's definitely possible and what happens if there is some sort of link to Reverse Flash? Could he be doing his own version of Flashpoint? 
where he's creating this nightmarish world for Barry where absolutely everything is going wrong. Like he has to shut down Star Labs, Joe is dead, the citizens don't trust him. This is definitely some sort of dream that Reverse Slash has thought up and maybe that links into when he comes in later in the episodes. Could it be a new version of Flashpoint but it's just Armageddon? But there's always a chance that this is caused entirely by Despero, but just given that Reverse Slash is going to show up, I'm going to say it's more likely to be if this is an alternate timeline we're seeing because Joe is dead and we know that Joe is coming back, it's very possible that Thorn could be behind it all. So that's about it for today's video guys, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video, if you did please be sure to leave a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel. Also subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new to not miss any future videos. You can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video that I just uploaded before this. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see